In today's homework video, you will be learning about the steps leading to the American Civil War. Go ahead and title your notes Steps to the Civil War as we will be covering 10 events leading up to the year 1861 when the war between the North and the South began. This map shows just how very much the United States had grown and expanded over the last few years with new additions being added along with territories and new states always being added. The first step is the idea of westward expansion, which was our whole last unit. This began in 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase and continued on with the land acquisitions we have discussed in previous lessons. As more and more land was acquired, settlers began moving west. The more people that moved west, the more towns and cities and communities out west grew. Once a territory had enough people living in it, the United States government would add the territory as an official state. The question was, would the new state be a free state or a slave state? Would it allow slavery as legal or would it allow slavery as illegal? The northern states hoped the new state would be a free state because that meant the north would have more free states than the south had slave states. And obviously, vice versa, the southern states hoped the new states added in the west would be given the slave state status because that meant that the, sl the south would have more slave states than the north. Both the North and the South were vying for power about this issue, and it started causing a big conflict in the United States government. The federal government wanted to keep the peace between the North and the South to keep things balanced and not give too much power to one side or the other. Draw a picture of a balance with slave states on one side and free states on the other side. When the territory of Missouri became an official state, it was one of those instances. The North wanted it to be a free state, and the South wanted it to be a slave state. So the way that the government dealt with the situation was by adding the state of Maine to the United States at the same time that it added Missouri. Maine was brought into the country as a free state, and to balance it out, Missouri was added to the country as a slave state. Draw a picture of both of these states being added to the United States in the year 1820. The government also made a new rule that said there would be no more slavery allowed north of the Missouri line. You can imagine how the southern states felt because there was still a lot of territory north of Missouri that had the potential for statehood in the near future. But slavery was limited to only the states and lands south of the 36 degree latitude. Nat Turner's rebellion was the next step that led to the Civil War. This happened in the year 1831. Nat Turner was a slave working on a farm in Virginia. He is famous for leading a slave rebellion in which he conspired with other slaves to rise up against their white masters and their families and kill them. Nat Turner and his men killed 56 white men, women, and children before they were stopped. Unfortunately, Nat Turner's rebellion made life even harder for slaves in the South. You see, white slave masters got scared when they heard the news that slaves had risen up against their masters, stolen guns and weapons, and stormed into their homes to kill their families. The southern states began passing laws that limited the movement and education of slaves and free African Americans to prevent slaves from communicating with one another and potentially conspiring to do something similar like this again. Rules got even tougher for slaves, and they were prevented from learning to read and to write and to have an education. Step four leading to the Civil War was the California Compromise, also known as the Compromise of 1850. So California got enough people to become a state. Hmm, I wonder why. Remember what had happened only one year before in 1849 that brought droves of people to California? Yep, that's right, the California Gold Rush. So here's California wanting to be a state, and why might this become a problem? Notice where California is on the map. What line runs smack dab through the center of the state? The Missouri Line. The law that had been passed just a few years before, which prevented slave states north of the line. But California is, has half of its land under the line and half above. So the way that the government dealt with it was to let California enter the country as a free state, but to let the rest of the Mexican Cession Territory get to choose whether they wanted to be free or slave based on what the majority of the population wanted once there were enough people to start a new state. Draw your own similar cartoon to remember what happened during the California Compromise. 
The Fugitive Slave Law was passed in 1850, which made it a crime to help runaway slaves. That means if you did not believe in slavery and lived in the South or in the North and were perhaps a part of the Underground Railroad, allowing your home to be a station along a slave's route to freedom, you are now breaking the law. The Fugitive Slave Law also made it legal for bounty hunters or slave catchers who were paid to do that to come up into the north where the slave may have run away to to search for the runaway and kidnap them and take them back down south. Free African Americans who were living in the north and who had never been slaves were in grave trouble too because this new law made it legal for slave catchers to kidnap them and to sell them into slavery in the south. The sixth step is one you all may have already know about, and that was the publication of Uncle Tom's Cabin in 1852. Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author, had actually been so disgusted by the Fugitive Slave Law that she felt compelled to do something about it. That had given her the motivation to write this novel, a book that opens the eyes to the evils of slavery. The book was a tremendous hit and influenced many to support abolition, convincing thousands that not only was slavery wrong, but it should be ended in the country for good. Harriet Beecher Stowe is known for saying, it's a matter of taking the side of the weak against the strong, something the best people have always done. The seventh step to the Civil War was the Kansas-Nebraska Act and Bleeding Kansas. Notice the year is 1854. We are only six years away from the Civil War starting at this point. The Kansas-Nebraska Territory now had enough people living there to become a state, but the question was, would it be added as a free state or a slave state? Notice where Kansas is located on the map. It is above the Missouri line established years before with the Missouri Compromise. So technically, it would have to be automatically a free state to follow this law. But this angered a lot of people living here, as well as the North and the South, so Congress knew they had to do something about it. They said that territory north of the 40th parallel now was called the Nebraska Territory, and territory south of the 40th parallel was called the Kansas Territory. The most controversial part of the Kansas-Nebraska Act was that each territory would decide for itself whether or not to permit slavery. This stipulation repealed or took away the Missouri Compromise of 1820, which stated that slavery was prohibited north of the 36th parallel. For Nebraska, it was a pretty easy decision. Most people living there wanted to be a free state, not have slaves. But not so with Kansas. In fact, both pro-slavery and anti-slavery groups had actually sent settlers to Kansas specifically for this reason to have more people living in Kansas that supported their side and to create a majority when they voted to have or not have slaves. Not surprisingly, Kansas became a battleground for both sides. And sadly, people on both sides took up arms against each other and started fighting about it, resulting in violence and bloodshed, hence earning the nickname Bleeding Kansas. Draw your own image to remember Bleeding Kansas next to your notes. Finally, on January 20th, 29th, 1861, after much controversy, Kansas was admitted to the United States as a free state. The Dred Scott decision in 1857 was when the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that African Americans were not considered citizens. Dred Scott was a slave who forever changed the definition of property. He went with his master to Illinois and Minnesota and claimed that this made him a free man since these were technically free states. Dred Scott sued his new owner, John Sanford of New York, for damages alleging physical abuse. Even though a federal court ruled that Scott was indeed a citizen, the case moved on to the Supreme Court, and those nine justices ruled otherwise. They said that government cannot take away property, and since Dred Scott was John Sanford's property, that he had to remain Stansford's slave. Chief Justice Roger Taney said that African Americans could never become United States citizens and that the Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional. This meant that African Americans had no rights and that they were seen as property even in free territories and states. You already know about John Brown and the raid on Harper's Ferry, but this was most definitely a step to the Civil War, which should be mentioned. 
John Brown was a staunch abolitionist, attempts to arm slaves by raiding the garrison in Harper's Ferry to start a slave rebellion. He is unsuccessful, is captured and executed, but he becomes a hero for the North, and they see him as a martyr. The South, on the other hand, sees him as a nightmare. The final step to the Civil War is the presidential election of 1860. Just like today, every four years, the citizens would vote for the President of the United States in November. And in 1860, what, it was an election year for choosing the next president. The nation, as you can see, was quite divided, and the election highlighted these divisions. As you can see from this map, much of the country was split. Abraham Lincoln was running for president, and those in the North voted for him. But those in the South wanted slavery supporting men in the, in the office of the presidency, like Breckinridge or Bell. In fact, the South opposed Lincoln so much that his name did not even appear on the ballot in nine Southern states. When Lincoln did win, the South was done. This is when they decide they no longer want to remain a part of the country. Your final note is this word and its definition, which is what the southern states started to do less than a month after Lincoln was elected. Secession is the act of breaking away from the country, and ultimately, the secession of the southern states causes the beginning of the Civil War in 1861.